I'm glad you had a good business trip, honey. It sounds like it went really well. Yeah, I'm glad to be home. Is that a computer case? Yeah, it's the Define S from Fractal Design. It runs so quietly, I figured I'd put it there as a reminder that in this crazy, hectic world, silence really is golden. Is that the same computer case? Yeah, the Define S supports triple radiators, water cooling pumps, and reservoirs. So I figured I'd put one there just to remind myself to be flexible in life. Really? In the bathroom? Why? Well, yeah, I figured the toilet hasn't been working lately, and the Define S has such a spacious interior that I just thought- Oh my god! The Define S from Fractal Design is built for uncompromised custom water cooling. Please use responsibly. Click the link in the description for more info. What's up guys, today I'm going to be reviewing a brand spanking new video card from AMD's 300 series that just launched earlier this week. This is the PowerColor R9390X, successor to AMD's former flagship, the R9290X. By now you're probably aware that the 300 series consists of all rebranded GPUs that we've seen in previous generations. And while many of us may be reserving more excitement for AMD's very soon to be released Fury cards with their fancy new Fiji chips and HBM technology, there may still be some rationale for picking up a 300 series card. For starters, R9 300 card owners will benefit from full DirectX 12 support and AMD's newest technologies like Virtual Super Resolution, Liquid VR, and of course FreeSync. AMD is also claiming the R9 390 and 390X to be equipped for 4K gaming, a bold statement that we'll verify with some benchmarks later on. Taking a closer look at our 390X, the card uses an enhanced version of the Hawaii XT GPU found on the 290X. So yes, we do get the same 28 nanometer GCN 1.1 architecture, and the same number of 2816 stream processing units, though a big memory clock boost over the 290X is a nice surprise, jumping from 5 to 6 gigabits per second, a 20% increase that yields an impressive memory bandwidth of 384 gigabytes per second. That should serve nicely with the 8 gigs of GDDR5 on the 512-bit bus, the new baseline frame buffer for the 390 and 390X. Whereas the 290X came stocked with 4 gigs of memory using two 2 gig chips, AMD has stepped up their game to using two 4 gig chips, which not only grants the obvious benefit of more capacity, but higher clock speeds at lower voltages. Don't expect any power savings though, as the card still carries a hefty 275 watt TDP in true AMD fashion. Core clock speed also gets a boost over the 290X, but a minor one at that, at 5%, bumping it up to 1050 MHz. PowerColor has given their 390X a slight factory overclock to 1060 MHz. Speaking of which, I'm supposed to be reviewing this card, so now that you're a bit more familiar with some of the more notable changes surrounding the 300 series, there is still much to say about PowerColor's take on AMD's short-lived flagship. This card is sporting a beefy 11.5 inch cooler that incorporates a traditional dual slot design. But don't be fooled, with a large width of 2 inches, this particular 390X occupies the space of a 3 slot card, effectively blocking the slot 2 spaces beneath it. Fortunately, most ATX boards have their highest speed PCIe slots more than 2 spaces apart, but this is something to bear in mind if you plan on having several PCI connected cards. As cumbersome as it may be, this is an absolutely gorgeous cooler, loosely enclosed by a textured steel frame with striking silver plastic accents. PowerColor has done a bang up job with the build quality here, as everything from the shroud to the 380mm fans feel top notch. As we're starting to see on more and more video cards these days, the fans here keep at 0 RPM when idling, only spinning up when the GPU temp rises above 60 degrees Celsius, a simple yet effective feature for power saving and dead silent operation with low impact usage. Beneath the blades is a monstrous nickel-plated aluminum heatsink that spans the entire length of the PCB and then some. Also included is an all-copper GPU block for effective heat dissipation along with three 6mm heat pipes and one 8mm pipe. On the front side we get some power color branding that's just the right amount of shiny and power ports for one 8-pin and one 6-pin PCIe connector. Flipping around to the back, we see PowerColor has mounted a beautiful metallic backplate to the PCB for added rigidity and straight up sex appeal. Tasteful ventilation cutouts and an attractive brushed finish make this another perfect example of the card's outstanding craftsmanship. 
Finally, on the back, we get two dual-link DVI, HDMI 2.0, and DisplayPort 1.2 video outputs. As I hinted earlier, I did run some benchmarks on this card at 1080, 1440, and most importantly, 4K to see if AMD's claims of 4K ready gaming are actually true. Unlocking the card's potential, I was quickly able to boost the core clock speed to 1125 megahertz with no problems, meaning you get about the same relative overclocking potential as the 290X. Even leaving the memory clock speed at stock, I couldn't take the GPU any further, which might indicate that we're now reaching near 100% of the Hawaii XT's full potential. Throughout my testing, the card's cooler did a fine job at keeping temps below 69 degrees Celsius, though at the cost of noticeable fan noise in my Define R5. Naturally, wearing a pair of cans, or even running the game audio through a pair of speakers at low volume, drowns out the sound entirely. Still, by creating a custom fan curve in MSI Afterburner, I was able to create a silent gaming experience at 60% fan speed, which raised the GPU temp slightly to a still comfortable 76 degrees Celsius. And in case you were wondering, all tests were run in my X99-5820K system on Windows 8.1. All right, tearing through this video, I love it. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here are the benchmarks. So class, what did we learn? Well, if you're familiar with the performance of the 290X, you can see that this card does in fact outperform it, albeit by a relatively smaller margin. Still, beating out its predecessor puts the 390X in the ring with Nvidia's GTX 980, and though I don't have a 980 on hand to test myself, the numbers I've seen in the past lead me to believe that these two cards would be trading blows in the majority of today's games. The reason this matters is because the R9 390X is retailing for 429 USD at the time of its launch, or about 70 bucks cheaper than the GTX 980. I suppose my point in all of this is that regardless of how ordinary or uninspiring these R9 300 series cards may be, they're still on par with their team green counterparts, but at a far lower price point, which perhaps is exactly the angle AMD intended to play. Now circling back to the prospect of 4K gaming, <laughs> Well, we didn't exactly live up to that one, did we? I mean, even though I ran all my tests with anti-aliasing, it's unlikely that the frame rates gained from disabling that filter would satisfy the common enthusiast gamer who spends $400 plus on a graphics card. 4K-ready GPUs still have a long way to go until they can consistently hit those smooth frame rates we're used to at lower resolutions. Now that being said, the 390X is a great option for Quad HD gaming, as we saw it hit 60 FPS in most of today's tests. As for the card in question, I'm really impressed by PowerColor's rendition of the 390X. This is easily one of the most solidly built cards I've seen, and while it's easily confused with a large cement brick, it's a pretty brick, and I'd happily build my next house with a thousand of them if I could. After all, it'd be a shame not to utilize the structural integrity of that backplate. The cooler itself does its job well, and does so quietly if you're willing to do some quick fan tuning. Overall, this is a beautifully crafted card that'll make most gamers happy, assuming you have the room for it. But let me know what you guys think of this card and the 300 series and all that jazz in the comments below, and don't forget to toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Before we go, I want to thank today's sponsor, lynda.com. Are you bored? Have you grown tired of all the mindless distractions on the internet? Don't answer that. Let's just assume for the purpose of this advertisement that you are all of those things. Lynda.com has a metric fudge ton of online tutorials to keep your brain stimulated. Every online course is led by industry professionals who are trained experts in video editing, 3D printing, and when to tell stories. Yes, there's a video on when to tell stories. How awesome is that? Because knowledge is power! If you're interested in obtaining more knowledge so you can then acquire more power and eventually take over the world with an army of Nyan cats, cruise over to lynda.com slash awesome sauce for a 10 day free trial and learn something new today. Also feel free to check the description below if you want to buy shirts like this one or bookmark my Amazon affiliate link and use it every time you buy stuff. It helps me out tremendously. I'm Kyle with Awesome Sauce Network. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.